because I loved Africa and because I still love Africa, I've decided to become a professional hunter. This came as a, a game changer, a game changer opportunity in my life, and, and I had to grab it. So you want to be a professional hunter? Well, you'll spend the next 18 months learning cool stuff like this. Okay, so the standard practice throughout the world, whenever anybody opens up an animal, you always open up on the animal's left. So the first thing you look at, you look at this animal's spleen. Conducting autopsies, building rifle mount muscle memory, understanding African ecology, shooting big ball rifles and being put under intense pressure. To pass the course, these guys will have to do 50 approaches on bull elephants. So they don't panic when they're in, when they're in close uh, uh, contact with, with the elephants. You can see the tail of that elephant. It's quite stuff, so he's not sure of himself. It's important they get up close and personal to dangerous game. How else will they really understand them? read their body language and anticipate when things are going to get real interesting. The PH course at the South African Wildlife College is open to all. Max is from France, Brighton is from Zimbabwe and Kieran is from the UK. He's doing the short field guide course as part of his gap year. It's one thing to go and sit in the classroom in, in the lecture theatre learning about these things, but to actually be here in the bush and be able to go out and see a herd of buffalo and like stand 10 metres away from them and you know have them all pressed up against you like that. It's, it's a, something you don't get in, a, in England or in the lecture theatre, so it's a, a good place to be, I think. But why does grass burn? Because there's fire, yeah, but what, what feeds the fire? The department is run by Dr. Kevin Robertson, author of The Perfect Shot. And if you open up a carcass that has died of anthrax, you will contaminate that area for 50 years. So if you see blood coming out of all the natural openings, you never open that animal up. As a vet and a hunter, Dr. Robertson brings a wealth of experience and knowledge to the course. They have two classrooms, the Orthodox one and this one, also known as the Kruger National Park. No school day is ever the same. We join Kevin and fellow lecturer Peter explaining how to make sure the impala hunch from this morning's autopsy should be hung correctly to tempt a leopard. Leopards are basically lazy animals. They prefer to walk in a road rather than walk through the grass, especially if there's a bit of dew on the grass. They don't like to get their feet wet. So what we're going to do, we're just dragging uh, some guts. We're just going to drag it so if this leopard walks along the road, he'll pick up the scent and he'll start following it. Always drag towards the bait and never away from it. So when we get to the tree, we'll walk it's in the drainage line. We'll walk about a couple hundred meters down and then drag towards the tree. Drag in, so we've got a sort of like a star formation coming towards the tree. And in the tree will be the, this half an impala. We only get about six or seven a year. So every opportunity we, we get an impala, we make sure we utilize it to its full extent. Get our students to climb in the tree. We're going to wire the impala into the tree and then we'll drag from there. Cut all of those. Yeah. Keep going. So the leopard will be standing on this dead branch and he's going to reach down, grab the impala, he's going to pull it up, take a few bites, and he looks up, the impala will sing down again. So you want to sort of keep the leopard occupied. You want to make it too easy for him to feed. And that, when he's preoccupied with feeding, he doesn't look at all the, look at you, they're hopefully sitting in your blind somewhere. Now they're just covering it with this, so the vultures don't see it. They'll spot this from a mile high in the sky and then they'll be able to come and try and, try and eat it. So he just wanted to... Uh, and also the, the leaves will protect it, make it stop this from drying out too quickly. And what you do now, as you come down, you just, where you've been touching now, you just smear the gut content on it, okay? Because you want the leopard to come in the tree and then smell humans on top of the tree like that. The students make plenty of mistakes and it's just one of the many skills they will have to grasp to fulfill their complex role as a professional hunter. People need to understand that what we do, it is for them. If they want to see black rhinos and white rhino in 20 years time it it depends on us it depends on us so yeah i think they they need to understand that we're doing what we do is for them we're not killing for the pleasure of killing 
we kill because we want to see lions in, in 2100, you know. It's not like you just wake up and start shooting animals when you're a professional hunter. It's not like that. No. I mean, there are certain ways. There's a system that you, 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 you work with, you understand? Certain quotas that, that get to be approved by the government. So when the government says we've got um, 100 elephants that needs to be hunted this year, well, that's what we work with. We're now off to investigate what's left of a lion's breakfast. The class disturbed him a couple days ago. Uh, we were here on Tuesday this week and we saw some vultures in a tree. So we got out to have a look and we just stuck our head over that anthill and a big ginger maned lion stuck his head out of a bush and looked at us and gave a warning growl and then backed off. And then we drove a bit further and we could actually see a lion lying in this area. So we, we've come back now, I just want to see what the lions have killed. Uh, there were lots of buffalo in the area, so we saw, I suspect it's a buffalo. Uh, we'll just go and have a look to see what it is. This is the, the rumen content of the, of the buffalo. They don't eat that, so put the hyenas have eaten up all the, everything else that's left behind. All right. So we have a young bull, eh? All right, fantastic. Let's take that, pick up that jawbone there. This is ideal, because what we'll do now this is the lower jaw, and we'll take the third molar, the first molar, which is the third tooth from the back, which is this tooth here. So with a vernier, we'll measure the crown heights, that's where the enamel starts. So it'll be from there to there, it'll be one measurement. And from there to there, it'll be the second measurement. We'll get eight measurements, we'll get an average, we'll plot it on a graph, and we'll get the age of this buffalo in years. So let's see if we can try and get this head off, guys. I can do. That's right. That's right. Yeah. This time of the year, because the water is quite limited, the herds are massive. I mean, the herd you saw this morning must have been a couple of hundred, and this herd was definitely was three or four hundred, I should imagine. So what they'll do, the lions will just push them, and anything that just lags to the back, they'll come in and uh, come in and whack him. But what's all quite interesting here, if you look at this carcass of the buffalo, you see the ribs on the buffalo almost overlap. So if you're hunting buffalo and you from a side-on shot. Invariably, you have to shoot through a rib. So the bullet goes through the skin, it'll go through muscle, then it'll go through some, some rib to get into the thoracic cavity. And these ribs are really hard. Okay, this is a young bull, but when the bull gets much older, his rose ribs get much broader and they get quite a bit thicker as well. This is what we call the thoracic inlet. So when a buffalo is looking at you, that's what your aiming point. But if you shoot off center on a frontal shot, what happens? The bullet hits and gets deflected around the ribs and goes into the abdomen. So quite often on a frontal shot, buffalo runs off and you're tracking the buffalo and you'll find blood in the dung and you say you've gut shot it. And they say, how is it possible to gut shoot a buffalo from the front? And it's, the reason for that is of this rib shape. If you shoot it through the thoracic inlet, which is this little hole there, it's very deadly. But if you slightly off center and the bullet hits there, it just deflects around this continuous bony shield and it just runs around there and then it goes into the, into the abdomen. It's not often a college tutor finds it necessary to carry a big ball rifle over his shoulder. But out here there's plenty of good reasons and Pete has spotted line prints. You can see how he picks up his foot and he's putting it down. And this guy is walking very slow. You can see he's almost registering, which is, uh, you know, lions don't normally register. But this guy is ambling along. You can see there's the, the front foot and this is the back foot actually on top of the front foot Wait, over there. Kneel down and just blow gently. To show how fresh they are, Kevin gets Max to blow across them. They're fragile and will soon be lost in the wind. Pete tracks them and we end up finding two very beaten up old male lions about nine years old. Yeah. That's a displaced coalition. So those are the dominant pride males. Okay. So they've lost their territory, and look at that guy, he's blind in one eye. He's got a wound on his leg, and both that front guy was limping as well. You noticed he was limping. Yeah. Lions are such magnificent animals. But, they die, yeah. but when their time has passed, they fall off the bus very quickly. Because when they're a proud male, the lions, lionesses do most of the killing. So their job is to defend the territory and to, to breed. So they do little, but they don't kill much. So they become old, they become unfit. They start slowing down, they get arthritis, they become old, old men. And now all of a sudden the old men have now lost, been kicked out of the house. So they've got to go and cook for themselves now. Eh? 
Ja, nee. <laughs> We understand that. <laughs> they want to go and buy their own groceries now, okay? And, uh, and they haven't got any money to buy their groceries with, so they just now they start scavenging, they start begging. Oh. Wow. But from a hunting point of perspective, this is the perfect lines to hunt. Because they've done their job, they've bred, they've passed their genes on, and I would rather get a swift bullet rather than starve to death, eh? Hey? Yeah. Take me a long time yeah. to starve to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but these are the ones that can become dangerous, resorting to scavenging, looking for easy meals, which often can include humans. I mean, we had a situation in one of our exams in the Zamb at Chimutsi Dam in the, in the Zambezi Valley. One of our students was taken out of the tent and killed and eaten by a lion yes. on, the on the examination. And it was the same thing, the same situation, old lion like this, starving to death. So, lions are beautiful, magnificent animals when they're in their prime, but when they not lose that prime, then they, they fall off the bus really quickly. As Kevin says, Africa can be a cruel place and they'll probably starve to death within the next few months, which is one of the strongest arguments for hunting big cats here in Africa. The thousands of dollars it would raise would pay for more high security fencing, patrols, and ultimately more endangered animals being protected. As part of the PH course, students will have to learn to shoot. Most of them have no rifle experience, so they have to start with a pipe. They need to carry these pipes with them everywhere they go. If they point the red end in the wrong direction or leave it lying against a tree, it's forfeit time. They'll now have to exercise with a pipe full of concrete. When they need to shoot, they will have to shoot in either self-defense of themselves, their trackers or, or their clients. Uh, um, and they're not going to have a lot of time, uh, whether it's a, it's a shot coming towards them or maybe a wounded animal running away from them. And so their sight acquisition and how, this, how their rifle is going to get into their shoulder needs to be good. And so these pipes that we have, they're about five kilograms each, um, so it's very close to, to what, a, what a rifle would be. And we teach them not just the shooting and the mounting and practicing that, but it's also a continuous um, awareness of where they point their rifles, rifle safety, looking after their gun and all that kind of stuff that we're now drilling into them. And, it's, and some of the guys have never shot before, so we, we are doing this. And the guys that have shot before, they, they also get something good out of it. Another problem they need to overcome is the skill of using a rifle scope. Again, some students find this tough. Aimpoint has helped deal with the stumbling block. With both eyes opened at the target, the class's end goal is a lot clearer. The Aimpoint units are just one part of the involvement of this Good. Swedish company. The company also helps fund part of this PH course. Its president, Leonard, is here for the first time to experience it for himself. Educating professional hunters in the way that Southern African Wildlife College does, I think is admirable. It's something that should happen in a lot of more places. But their education, it's, it is extensive. Uh, and it's not like you're coming in and, and you leave two weeks later with a PH permit. Uh, you have to go through a very, very deep education in every way. A lot of tests that you have to pass to get your exam at the end. And I think that is, it's very, very good. So after all that you have to be tempted to train to be a PH, if nothing else, it's gonna look real cool on your CV no matter where you come from. And as the RAND is so weak at the moment, the 18 month course will cost you about the same as one year at university in the UK. About 9,000 pounds or $12,000 including meals. For more information about the college, go to www.wildlifecollege.org.za and for more information about Aimpoint, go to aimpoint.com.